Hi, uh, welcome back to my channel. Today we'll be looking at this game between uh, uh, Wolfgang Ullmann and Arthur Hennings from 1968. So, uh, it is white to move and I would recommend you to pause the video and come up with the move that white played. So, clearly this position takes some calculation. Of course, uh, we have to calculate all the forcing moves. We probably should calculate the move uh, bishop takes f7, but you know, rook takes f7. I mean, there are no real tricks, and there's no real way how white can make this work. However, um, that is why white needs to make this move rook takes c5, the other forcing move. And uh, this takes some calculation. Now, uh, of course, white just takes a pawn here, and if black you know, moves his queen away to b8, which is probably the best move. White will be just simply up a pawn, a move like bishop e4 or something. Uh, the question is what happens after black takes the rook? Uh, not to mention that if uh, black were to make a move queen b6, uh, white would make the move a5 in this position, it would transpose, then black will kind of have to take the rook on c5 anyway. Well, uh, we'll notice that on the move, uh, queen takes c5, bishop takes f7. It looks like the queen is hanging. And uh, if the move rook takes f7, rook takes d8, comes with a check. Uh, and on the move rook f8, we just take the queen. And so we win there. However, uh, black has this tricky move, king h8. And uh, this is uh, why calculation is so important. We take on c5, rook takes d1. And king f2. And it's very important to see that on the move rook takes f7 in this position, white wins with the move queen h5, and now both rooks are attacked. Without this move, black would actually be, uh, would, could even be better, you know, uh, two rooks and a knight. But uh, on the move queen h5, then uh, in, he has no way of defending the two rooks. He gives a check, king e1. The, the two rooks are still attacked. They cannot protect each other. Um, yeah, the quite also, if black does not take the bishop, the problem is that the knight on e7 is pinned, so he cannot really defend it. Uh, I mean, rook d7 is possible, but maybe move like bishop to e6. On the move rook c, at the very least, you could play queen takes c8, uh, knight takes c8, and uh, bishop takes d7. And but uh, I, I'm assuming that I move queen b4 is even stronger just to play this position. The two rooks are just so. Uh, weakly placed. Uh, I have this sample variation. Not, but why can they play? Maybe play like queen d6 here. There's no chance. Anyway, uh, this is a very um, good exercise for chess calculation. One tip that I have uh, when calculating variations is after you calculate all the forcing moves, you know, all checks, then uh, then uh, captures, then moves that attack a piece, or you know, palm promotions. Uh, uh, than other moves, uh, etc. Uh, after you calculate your variation, you should always calculate one move ahead, kind of. So when it looks like it's done deal, there's no, there's nothing left. Maybe you can make a threat somewhere that wins the game. That's why queen h5 was such a difficult move to see in the end of the position. There's no, nothing that the queen can capture. But you have to realize that both rooks will be hanging. All right. So if you have anything else that you want me to show on my channel, please leave in the comments. All right. Thanks.